Hey guys, this is Dow Phoenix, and welcome back to what I'm playing. Today we're going to be checking out a game whose sequel just came out today that has been a massively successful game for the PlayStation 3 as well as the PlayStation 4, which I'm playing it on, The Last of Us Remastered. I first played Last of Us on launch day when it came out back in 2013 on the PlayStation 3. I was there getting my pre-order copy like many other people on launch day because this game was massively hyped and a lot of potential was available for this game. This was during the whole zombie craze in the media that we had, of course, like The Walking Dead, for example, a really popular TV show on AMC based on a graphic novel series that really kind of brought a resurgence to the genre. And The Last of Us kind of piggybacked a little bit on this, but at the same time it presented things in a very different way. In The Last of Us, we follow two characters, Joel and Ellie, as they trek across America trying to find a mysterious freedom group called the Fireflies, a group that is trying to find a cure for mankind's ailment of the zombie apocalypse. The Last of Us is a great departure from the previous efforts we've had from Naughty Dog. A lot more light-hearted affairs, games like the Crash Bandicoot series, Jack and Daxter, and of course the popular Uncharted series. This game has a very different tone and feel from everything else that Naughty Dog has done before this time. The best way that I can describe the gameplay of The Last of Us is... That it's pretty much a more action-packed, direct gameplay style that we saw in games like Telltale's The Walking Dead. This isn't a point-and-click kind of game. You have direct control over your actions of your characters. And there's also a lot of elements of stealth that are very important to the context of this game. Because you have to realize that in this game, you are very vulnerable. You can die very easily, which would kind of make sense in such a cruel world that they live in. Now, that being said, this is a game that just about any gamer can get into because of the fact that there are multiple difficulty settings available from the start. So you can up or down the challenge as much as you want, which is really good because it gives you the control over the kind of experience you're going to have in this game. Despite the linearity of this game, there is actually a great open exploratory feel as you go through the world. There are a large variety of different challenges to overcome, obstacles to get past, as well as environments to explore as you search for supplies and you search for the way forward through this game. Also one thing that you really cannot ignore about this game is the excellent character progression and development because you really get a sense for how these characters change and grow throughout the adventure. You can tell by exploring the environments of this game that they are meticulously made and laid out. This is not a game that was haphazardly put together with random corridors in order to give the players some kind of sense of exploration and challenge. 
these are very well crafted areas that give you the sense that this is a much larger world than what you're actually seeing on the screen. Get off! Come on, we don't have much time. Back to pushing. So just to break down the core gameplay loop of this game, you get into a new area, you explore around a bit, you find supplies, you find weapons, you find crafting materials in order to make different items, and then you come across very carefully placed set piece challenge events. Basically sequences where you have to deal with zombie or human opponents in a very well crafted area and you have a lot of agency on how you want to handle this. You can go in guns blazing, you can be stealthy and take them out one at a time. You can try to avoid the encounter entirely in a lot of cases. There is a lot that you can do in this game, although it is important to know that in order to get a mastery of this game, you'll definitely want to take advantage of the stealth system because their supplies are very limited and it's gonna be very challenging if you run out of bullets. Now, one thing that I'm a little disappointed about when it comes to the stealth gameplay is that it does feel a little rough around the edges. It doesn't play as smoothly as some of my favorite stealth-based games, such as the Splinter Cell series, for example, which I feel does stealth really well. And you get a lot of choice on how you want to handle these encounters. But at the same time, it does it just doesn't feel right to me. Uh, but that being said, it does function a lot better than some of the worst stealth games out there at the same time. So it's kind of more in the middle of the road as far as how well it is handled in this game. But I do want to point that out because the rest of the gameplay is actually really solid. And it's just a shame that the stealth gameplay isn't as much as I would hope. Now I want to go ahead and get into that a little bit more later on. Outside of the core mechanics of exploration, combat, and stealth, there is also the ability to craft and upgrade your gear. So you will collect parts throughout the game that will allow you to increase the abilities of your weapons in terms of the rate of fire, the reload speed, the amount of rounds you can have in a clip, and so much more. Uh, there are a lot of opportunities to upgrade throughout the adventure and really to fine-tune your favorite weapons. You also can collect drugs or pills, which will allow you to enhance your character in various ways, allow them to hear zombies from a farther distance, have a higher maximum health, and more. And in addition to that, of course, you will find various materials that will allow you to craft various items such as Molotov cocktails, shivs, and nail bombs, which will all be useful in order to dispatch your various foes throughout the adventure or to give you some easy escape or respite from the dangers. Finish it! I got it! Nicely done. You bet? <sighs> Not today. You? Not today. All right. Spread out. Make sure we didn't miss any more of these fuckers. Wow. Outside of the excellent characters that you're going to encounter in this game, one of the big stars of the show are the environments and the atmosphere of this game. As I mentioned before, this game does have a large variety of different areas to explore, and I did of course say that they were meticulously created, but the graphics and the total mood of the game are just 
such a wonder to behold, especially considering that this game was originally on the PlayStation 3. And obviously, though, the PS4 version does have some enhancements like better resolution and frame rate and all that good stuff. It's essentially the same game at the same time. So you have to consider just what they were able to eke out from the last generation consoles versus now, where this game still holds up pretty well for the current generation, despite being a remaster of a last generation game. There, how's that? Let's go. And of course, you can't build excellent tension and mood without an excellent soundtrack and a stellar audio experience, which this game definitely delivers in spades. I'm going to go ahead and just let it play out a little bit for you guys. Just have a nice and good listen to this. As you can hear, the soundtrack is very dynamic and has excellent buildup, and of course the very raw and surreal sound that you get, like for example, the reverberation from the gun whenever you fire it, the really raw sounding punches when you punch an enemy in the face, and so much more. It really is a oral treat to behold in this game. Probably highly recommended to play this game with surround sound or some headphones to get the best possible experience. Come on down. I do. How about something uh, a little more your size? It's for emergencies only. Okay. I think it should be quite clear by now at this point of the video that you realize that I am levying some high praise for this game, but it was not always that case because even though I originally did play this game on the PlayStation 3 back in the day, some of the issues I had with the stealth gameplay as well as one of the enemy types, the clickers, really got on my nerves and even though I was drawn to the game in terms of the styling and the gameplay and whatnot, those were enough to keep me from finishing the game because I just really had a major problem with those kinds of things. So I want to put that in the context whenever I talk about this game because I guess you could say I'm a born again fan of this game now. And I think it's really important to kind of discuss that and let you guys know because I'm kind of experiencing the game again 
for the second time. And I know it was critically praised back then. Some people got it the first time. I didn't really get it the first time, but I got it this time. And I really enjoyed it. So um, that being said, there are some certain things that I want to talk about in regards to the sequel. As you might be aware, there is a lot of controversy regarding The Last of Us Part 2. This all stemmed back from, I think it was March, when some leaks came out about some of the gameplay elements and story arcs that this game was going to follow. And it's really interesting to see how quick people are to judge based on these leaks, which total only a few percentage points of the total game experience as a whole. It's really interesting to see the gaming community completely dismiss it. They called it SJW trash for the mere existence of a transgender character in the game, which, let's be real guys, transgender people exist. They're real. This is something in real life. It doesn't matter what your opinion on that stuff is. The fact that such a character exists in the game is not enough to call this SJW, as some people would call it, you know. And, of course, there's also the links to Neil Druckmann and Anita Sarkeesian. He, of course, cited her as an inspiration for his work. And, of course, I can totally understand why that would be off-putting to people. But I just kind of wanted to disperse this for a moment and let you guys know maybe you should play the game for yourself since it's out now before you're so quick to judge it you know because look at the metacritic user reviews it's being reviewed bomb over complete nonsense by people that suck up to these clickbait youtubers that have nothing better to do than make negative content like that and i sure as hell ain't your dad are going our separate ways. Get it together. We're not alone. I got two walking. There's more inside already. What are you doing? It's all right. Come here. Come here. Hurry up. You said it, Ellie. So fucking cool. That's what this game is overall to me. Because although it does have some rough edges and the stealth and whatnot, and I wasn't a big fan of a couple of events that happened through the game. For the most part, it is a game that definitely needs to be experienced by anybody that is into adventure type games because this game is quite an adventure and it just plays great it has excellent atmosphere graphics and music all kinds of extra features of course like this fun photo mode which allowed me to make the thumbnail that i use for this video and of course unlockable things you have new game plus options course you can play through the game with multiple difficulty settings and so much more not to mention this game can be purchased on the cheap now or you can even get it i believe off the playstation now service if you're subscribed to that and so much more of course so if you've never played the last of us before well you sh probably shouldn't be judging the last of us part two until you have at least played this game and kind of compare the two in the way they are presented. But that being said, I really did enjoy my experience with this game. And I'm going to leave you guys with a really intense gameplay sequence that I thought was really enjoyable. So I'll leave you guys to it. Down Phoenix out. Easy. Please. Holy Help. shit. Are we gonna help him? Put your seatbelt on, Ellie. Well, wh what about the guy? Oh, he ain't even hurt.
I'm okay. Then get out, quick. Catch your breath. We're leaving. Watch out! Stay down! I got him! Please get the way. Let's check inside. anything yet? Hey, talk to me. All right. I think that's the last of them. You okay? <clears throat> yeah, I guess so. Good. We need to get the hell out of here. 